What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is Muscle, and this is another Two Line Music Cuts Entertainment Report podcast. And today, we have a legend in the building. Listen, this lady here used to run a club that had Toronto on lock for at least 10 years. You go there for the festival and the wings. Listen, you drove right across the city just to get it. You know who we have in the building today? We have Phyllis James in the building today. What's going on, my sister? All right, Mr. Muscle. <laughs> God is good. Thank, I'm thankful for life. For sure, for sure. Yeah, Especially definitely. in these times right now. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. How have you been doing? How have you been keeping up? You know what? When I say I'm a hard woman for dead. Yeah. <laughs> you get licked down, you get back up. You get licked down, you get back up. You mm-hmm. put one foot in front of the other and you keep on moving. Yeah. And guess what? God has a great plan for all of us. Just keep on going. You so I'm blessed. You understand, especially somebody that's been in the business, entrepreneurship, nightlife, and everything for so long, you understand the ebb and flows, the ups and the super downs. You know what I mean? And that's oh, yeah. really what I want to get through today with you. Mm-hmm. All right? All right, Moss. Let's go. All right. Phyllis, mm-hmm. let's talk about growing up as a kid. Growing up as a kid, what do you want to be? Growing up as a kid, mm-hmm. my mouth big, you know, as yeah. you can see, my lips big, right? <laughs> Somebody love chat. Okay. Always talking, always talking, but yeah. talking to the elders, because you can learn a lot from older people when you're growing up. You don't really have to experience it yourself. Mm-hmm. And I love to entertain people, okay. make them laugh, even yeah. when they're sad, make them laugh. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to have a nightclub from when I was 12 years old. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that was when they say growing up where you want to be. I want a nightclub. Yeah, entertainment. Yeah. Definitely. And this was when you were in Jamaica? Yeah, we came here in um, 69 is a good year, isn't it? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. We came here August 1969. My parents came 67. Mm -hmm. So grew up here. Mm -hmm. Grew up. um, But then when you came in, you know, they gave you two social insurance numbers. Okay. Just in that. case you messed up one, there's another one there right. for you. Okay. Great. Oh, Canada. Yeah. Oh, Canada. So I uh, grew up here in the schooling system, mm-hmm. but always um, maintained the, our roots, mm-hmm. our culture. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So um, kind of whitewashed, but still had that Jamaican foundation. Got you. Yeah. And where, where were you guys living or something while you we, would say you were whitewashed? Well, back then, when you see a black person, you run and hug them up, huh? There what? wasn't too many of us. Listen. You know, and so we started off at Dover Court and Bloor area. Mm-hmm. C- across the road was uh, where um, Ralph Paddy started and then Michadine. It was a corner wire. Um, West Indian store was on the corner. So that was a hub till mm-hmm. things moved up to more Eglinton. And, you know, so we grew up there and then we moved to Mississauga. And when we moved to Saga now, it was um, in the 70s. And... Uh, Dundas was uh, two lanes. Wow. And I remember on our street, there were only two black families. And then they used to spray Mississauga for black flies. And my dad used to say, you know, be, be careful before then go spray no thing saying no fly. <laughs> <laughs> but then, yeah, Mississauga, we yeah. grew up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was it. Wow. And then your journey there in your household, how many brothers and sisters do you actually have? Um, three, uh, three boys, mm-hmm. uh, two girls, and a uh, a uh, brother, a step, uh, another brother. And yeah. were you the youngest, oldest, middle? Where did you fall? Um, middle girl. Okay. And um, always middle, middle yeah. down the line. Yeah. All right. So then, from there, you said you always wanted to be into entertainment. Did you see your parents or anybody around you? They were into entrepreneurship. They owned anything. What was your real bug to say? You know what? I want to get into nightclub, and then you started to move towards it. Good question, Mus. Mm-hmm. Good question. Thank you. My mom. Um, my hero, mm-hmm. Valda, Valda Mommy James, mm-hmm. always entertaining, always cooking. Mm-hmm. Um, she always said, Phyllis, it's easy to get a man, you know, but it's hard to keep him. You have to know, forget <laughs> and make sure the man is fed proper. Yeah. So mommy didn't joke with food and presentation. She wouldn't put the, the food in one plate. She'd put the, the meat in one and then the rice in one and the vegetable, you know? Okay. Like the old days when grandparents used to, you know, grandmother used to prepare granddaddy meal and cover right. it with a tea towel and nobody can touch that. You know what I mean? No. The respect. So mommy, mommy grew us up like that. Mm-hmm. And food was love. And cooking food. If you don't feel love, you don't cook food. Mm -hmm. So it's my mom. She was the one that really introduced you to food. To food. 
Sure. And entertainment, because we had our little home as a saga. She used to, you know, do little weddings and set up things and do a lot of catering. And she had six kids, and each of us was responsible. You set the table. Yeah. You do this. You do that. We used to hate it. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> what was your responsibility? Mine was to chat when the people didn't come in <laughs> and, <laughs> and seat them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 So then you got to, even though you didn't like it, you got to do your favorite thing. Mm. You were talking. You know talking, what I mean? Talking. Communication is really important. and. Mm. She knew I, I had the gift of the gap, so mm-hmm. go out there, go do it. All yeah. right. And what was Phyllis like going into like high school and all those stuff there before you actually started to mm-hmm. branch out into the field of getting into entertainment? Um, high school, good grades. Okay. Honor student. Um, started more like a dance group. Okay. Yeah. What were know? they called? Oh, my God. Boogie Woogie or something like that <laughs> back then. <laughs> That's when that's when running shoes was platform. You know what I mean? Okay. Remember those days? I don't know. Maybe you're kind of young still, so I don't know. Mm, yeah, I, I have yeah. Google. I know how to use Bell it. Bell foot pants yeah. and yeah, and the Afro thing and yeah. So uh, also social butterfly. Mm-hmm. Always have been. In high school, it continued. Yeah. Yeah. And when they say when you look in your name in the yearbook, most likely to do what was beside your name in the yearbook. Prime Minister. Yeah. Because <laughs> everyone loved me. Yeah. And if they didn't love me, they had a problem. Yeah. So I'd have to leave them alone. All right. Mm-hmm. I got you. I got mm-hmm. you. So then mm-hmm. this is high school now. So then did you go to college or did you go into business from there? What was your journey like from there? Uh, went to college. Mm-hmm. Went to um, Humber College in Seneca. Okay. Took business. Hospitality. Okay. Yeah. And um, always been interested in business. Mm-hmm. And um, from college, um, end up in the hotel industry. Okay. And um, I remember I used to love Rosa Soul to Soul. Still love him. Yeah. But, you know, as growing up in the in the white boonies and you hear about Rosa's, like, you know, so there's this little basement on Keel, Keel at Eglinton. This guy's name was Linford. Yeah. Back then they used to charge $5 to go in a basement. And Heineken was five dollars. So you yes. must know say if they're still selling Heineken these days for five dollars. <laughs> if you don't love this business, get out of it. Because yeah. it's not about the money. Clearly. And I went there and I heard Rose and I fell in love with Soul to Soul. So while I was in the hotel, mm-hmm. I brought Rosa into the hotel and started to do events. You know, bring Soul to Soul to the next level. Okay. And uh, at that point, to um, Bancroft had opened a, what was his club on uh, Albion? So Rosa came into there. So Rosa and I, we have a bond because mm-hmm. um, good music, good man. All right. And what um, hotel was this you're working at? A Celebrity Inn. Actually, it's not an immigration holding center, but a Celebrity Inn, Rexdale and uh, 27. Rexdale. Close to uh, Woodbine Shopping Center. Okay. So, yeah. And I guess you were doing management there at that time? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you could bring in and coordinate yes, all the events yeah, and things Yeah, like. catering, managing, front desk, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then how did you go from there now to start looking about Club Epiphany? Well, what happened most is that I wanted to bring our entertainment to a different level. Mm-hmm. You know, I was partying in basements. That smell like basement. I'm a weave start <laughs> messing up in a basement. You know what I mean? So yeah. I said, okay, let, let's go to another level. So mm-hmm. if we want to bring our co-workers out or whatever not, we can do a little impression. And you know what mm-hmm. I mean? So something Rosa, ironically, had... Ara Road. He had it was symphony or something. Symphony, yep. And there was an issue that happened there. Mm-hmm. You know, Rose and I talked. So I went in. Um, there was actually a shoot in there. Mm-hmm. So I went in to the landlord, met with him, and said, "Listen, I want the spot." Mm-hmm. He goes, "Are you sure?" Whatever happened, I said, "He said, okay, six months, no rent. If you can turn it around, turn it around." And what year was this? Oh, shaving cream. Mm-hmm. That was uh, early eighties. A late mid mid eighties. Mid eighties. So it was Symphony first. First, Rosa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then whatever happened, and then mm-hmm. it changed over to it was Epiphany. 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 And then when you started out, what was that like? Okay, let's even go back before that. Did you have to go to a bank get a loan? You did it. You bootstrapped it. How do you get it going from there? My sister Janice that died. Mm-hmm. Um, we went into the Bank of Montreal, mm-hmm. and. 
It was like a mess up business plan. Back then, you didn't have to go as intense. Mm -hmm. But we we started off with a little loan at Bank of Montreal. Okay. So because I know a lot of times they say entrepreneurs, especially female entrepreneurs, especially black female entrepreneurs, it's hard for you guys to get funding and those stuff there. So I wonder if that was an issue back then or you didn't really find that a problem. It it was an issue, but at the same time, it's your presentation, your business plan. You go in Mm -hmm. and you you have to sell them on on, on what you want to do. And you are your product. You know I mean so? If you, sometimes me, I always tell people, dress to impress. Don't dress like you're broke, even if you're broke, because yeah. you never know an opportunity is going to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, and they can invest in you if you don't, you know. And that's really what yeah. it comes down to, is because you're really looking for the investment, and they need a return on their investment. Exactly, exactly, yeah, definitely. And uh, the branding is something. Epiphany. Going back to that, in in our logo, we have two hearts that intertwine into one, and it's where friends meet and hearts mm-hmm. connect. Yeah, because that that's the people neighbor tree that plant epiphany. Like if they couldn't get in, they'd stand outside for two hours waiting to get in. Yeah, yeah I yeah. remember we're gonna go through that journey there because that a perfect epiphany journey, crazy crazy. Even the name, how did you come up with the name and the logo? Since you're speaking about the logo, okay, the name epiphany, um, biblical. Mm-hmm. You have a vision. You have an epiphany. Also, um, Epiphany religiously is coming together. So it's friends and hearts and come together. That, that's the Epiphany vision. Okay. And then the logo is just a definition of the word. Yeah. Putting it together. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. And how long did it actually take you to sit down and come up with this name here? I'm pretty creative. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm probably the black sheep in the family. Maybe I'm too creative. I'm trying to get myself in a bat you yeah. too. But, yeah. hey, but um, it took me around maybe two months to come mm-hmm. up with the logo. And back then, Funky, mm-hmm. Cornell Davis, mm-hmm. he's the one that we spoke and he helped me design it. So, you know, back then is when you used to cut out, when you make flyers, you cut out this and cut out that and yeah. pierce it and going back to those days, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's where it actually kicked off. Wow. that And yeah. was Epiphany from start, was it more family owned? You owned it as an individual? What was the deal there? Uh, without family, Epiphany wouldn't be because, you know, one hand can't clap. Okay. And my mom was essential because mm-hmm. no matter what, she'd be, she'd be in the kitchen. I'd be outside. So long weekend, holiday, when you can't get other people to come in, I can count on mommy and she can count on me. Yeah. But then there was uh, my brothers and my sisters, uh, niece, nephews. It's it's a family thing. And then we had extended family, like customers who are family. You just call on them, they're there. So one hand can't clap. It's not about Phyllis James. It's yeah. about the family of Epiphany. You understand, and I like it because you understand it's family first. It takes family to get this off the ground. Of course. You have good, you have bad family. Some of them you can't turn, you see, on holiday, you say, mm-hmm. but no matter what, they're family. Yeah. They're family. Makes sense. Well, yeah. okay, so then now you went to the landlord, you got the lease, you said, okay, six months, no um, mm-hmm. no rent paid. Mm-hmm. Okay, what was the first thing you did when you went in there? Or because it was symphony already, you didn't really have to do too much. No, the... the um, our business plan, our projected goal, our clientele mm-hmm. was all different. So it is, it's coming from scratch. We had to build one at a time. Okay. We're going after the working class where his $20 mm-hmm. matters. And when he comes in with his $20, we treat him like royal. Because that customer, you may see three or four times. It's not about the one that has the bag of money today because tomorrow mm-hmm. in Kumbrook, let me and you. Right? right. Mm-hmm. So we, we built our clientele one customer at a time. Wow, and that was there. So you guys went in with the plan, you guys renovated and get started. Do you remember the day that you actually opened your door and how that felt? It was a Friday. I had my Aunt Rose there. Okay. She was also a, a, like a big comedian, you know, right. and she liked to spin our music. Mommy okay. was in the kitchen. I was outside. And Aunt Rose used to run out. She ran outside and she was just flagging down the cars. To, come in, man. Come in, man. Come in, man. <laughs> and when they come in, we we're greeting them. So I remember, again, mm-hmm. family. Yeah. And our first sale that day was $20. And we moved up. Right moving there. on up. And do you remember exactly what it was that you sold? Um, it was, it's funny too, because this is another epiphany, um, mm-hmm. the chicken wings and festivals. We have to talk about those. So, um, I was just playing around with, uh, 
this festival mix. I said, Mommy, let's try this. And let's, mm-hmm. like, I used to like to twist my hair when I was a uh, child. I said, Mommy, let's twist it. Let's twist it. Because mm-hmm. Mommy used to make fancy dumpling and all of that so you yeah. cannot separate it when you eat. You feel good, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, so Mommy got it. And then we, we said, okay, let's let's put our festival on everything we sell, so as a, a decoration. And then later on, we said, okay, what about wings? Yeah. And that's how we started. Mommy and I just started to create, and we created the sauce, et cetera. Yeah. That was one of the most legendary things about Epiphany. I know. The wings and festival. All over the world. People would fly in, and I remember with this funny, funny story. When the hospital was up at... Um, uh, Finch and um, North Finch. Yeah. I forgot that. So this lady in our water bus, right? And she having her baby. Yeah. She took a cab and she came to Epiphany mm-hmm. before going to the hospital. <laughs> so this woman are walking a whole our belly, a whole yeah. our belly. Said, Phyllis, me want medium chicken wings on festival. Me going to the hospital. So I couldn't believe it. So I said, go sit in the camera, run yeah. at the back, me make it for me, bring it out. I me said, go when you are yeah. pushed, just <laughs> just bite down, put it, bite down, put it. <laughs> it's crazy, and I know it's crazy because we used to be in Scarborough sometimes. One o'clock in the morning, say, "Oh, you know what? We're hungry. We're driving to Epiphany, which is basically Western Road and Finch area. Go a bit further west on Finch. Then you get there, and we're way at the end of Scarborough. It was just that amazing to get the to get the food. And must that 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 is the concept now that we've done the big club. We're we're gone. We're going back to our food, Mm -hmm. right? So this new location, when you get there, Mm -hmm. the emphasis is on food because Epiphany has got the greatest client base. People say black people not lie on them. I I love my clientele. Yeah, trust me, and them tip too. Mm-hmm. You know, some black people not too good panty. <laughs> some of them, when they come up on a POS system, they're afraid, oh, your passes, yeah. oh, your passes. Because <laughs> it's no longer cash where you can just put whatever you have. Mm-hmm. Now you got to. But then I learn to tip now, you yeah. know. Then I give a little tip. Yeah. All I passed last night, pick up a uh, 120 chicken wings at 80 festival and mm-hmm. him squeeze a little 10 out, you know. Yeah. But then him feel away and him put $20 yeah. tip. He said, go on the pasta. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. It's when you love what you do. Yeah. It's just, it doesn't feel like work. It's just you love it. It's your passion. This is what you like to do. Must that's what it's all about. No mm-hmm. matter what you do in life, if you're doing 15 hours on a shift and you still happy going home. Yeah. Like you said, mm-hmm. there has to be a passion and a love mm-hmm. for what you do. Yeah. Definitely. 100% agreed. Mm-hmm. Let's get into some of your actual epic nights. Okay. Over at Epiphany. Whoa. Okay. All right. You I see? Th- I can think about that. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. All right. What was... Where you want to start? I'll let you carry me. Mm. Where are we going to start? See, if my ex said that, he'll still be around. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? He, everybody learns something new, so hopefully he watches this and understands yeah. it. That's what you should have said. Um, epic nights. Mm-hmm. You know, we were so fortunate to have five nights booming. Yeah. Which nights were these? Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday. But what first started off was our Thursday night. Okay. Let's go there. Let's yeah. go to our ladies' night, mm-hmm. which... We did something. Even the Metro licensing came down on us because strippers were taking business from the... Yes. You, you remember that? Because we had dancers in for mm-hmm. the girls, mm-hmm. right? And warmed them up, and then the guys came in after. The guys weren't allowed to be in mm-hmm. while the ladies were enjoying the show. So by the time the man them come in around 11 o'clock, if yeah. them can't <laughs> find a friendly female in, in the place... Something wrong with them. Yeah. All right? Mm-hmm. So that was our Thursday ladies' night mm-hmm. with, with featuring male strippers, which I learned after from Metro Licensing that you can't have those things in a nightclub. Yeah. So bad me, I, I stopped it. Right. I stopped it. you learned. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, stress-free Fridays. Mm-hmm. Started out with our mackerel and banana and dumpling complimentary. So again, going for the working guy coming home, mm-hmm. get a little and have a couple of drinks and go home. And it went on and that became probably one of her financially most beneficial not evenings, stress-free. Stress-free, Fridays. on the Fridays. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm gonna skip Saturdays now and then go to our Sundays. Yeah. Why, why are we skipping Saturdays? The Saturdays, because everyone can do a Saturday. Like a Saturday is, you know, 
sophisticated, laid back. And a Saturday is something that I don't really, I've never really pushed as yeah. a nightclub because if you're having your birthday party muscle and it's Saturday somewhere, I'm not competing with you. I'm going to come support you. Got you. So everyone that plans an event, mm -hmm. they plan it for what day? Saturday. A Saturday. Got you. So me not stretch nobody out on them Saturday and can do what they want to do. And mm -hmm. if they want a platter, I'll send it to them on the yeah. house. Right? Mm -hmm. So now Sunday. Mm -hmm. All right. Dance out. Mm -hmm. This is when we, we brought in Japan from Japan. We bring in from Italy. We bring in from Jamaica. Right. Anyone that 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 experienced the culture mm -hmm. of our music and love it. And you know, I had a lady there that really helped me, Angela. She was part of my promotion team. Okay. Because again, I look a bit whitewashed, and I wasn't into it. I'm not really a dancehall person. Okay. I'm not, but I learned also mm -hmm. when it came to dancehall queen. Um, that we had there also, you know, it was, you know, God rest his soul, Bruno, was also a member of our promotion team. And he would go and all over the world and he said, Phyllis, we just this Japanese girl, you know, why is she tough? You forget her. Mm -hmm. And so he would be out there linking me up to different people. So you had brought in, what's her name that time there, the Japanese girl? Mm -hmm. And she killed it. But I also had some dancehall queens right here in Toronto that mm -hmm. challenged. Mm -hmm. And they did a damn good job, too. Do you remember who they were? You know what? We had one, we had Destiny. Mm -hmm. uh, there was there's one yes. girl here. Oh, my God, I just went blank. Uh, Simone? Some, oh, oh, God, Simone, big. <laughs> Simone still on our Facebook. You know what she has yeah. up there. Uh -huh. Dancehall, Canadian dancehall dance queen, well, Simone. Okay. But what's her name again? Very flexible girl. Oh, she's going to kill me. I forgot her name. Oh, she was probably the one of the most flexible dancehall queen. Uh, Not sure. I don't even know. Oh, Jesus, God, man. she's going to kill yeah. me. I forget her name. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, Simone did a lot for promoting the business. She, you know, she had her own little thing going on there. And uh, I respect that. Yeah. And then on long weekends, it just went crazy. As a matter of fact, it went to a point that even I got scared because when TTC bus cannot go on Arrow Road to go up to their depot after work and they had to call police in okay. because of the bikes and because cause long weekends we did barbecue. Okay. Blocko style barbecue where, you know, started outside, come back inside, all kids go home at nine, parents used to bring home their kids and come back. And it was just mad and then also uh yellow mm -hmm. which was a promoter helped me to start um all ages so at all we did all ages at epiphany we'd have like 600 kids inside 200 outside i remember one day this mama came in and she didn't give her daughter permission to come to the all ages so this pull a real jamaican mama <laughs> mr pink rollers in the head you know right. the duster on come to the door push the security down and walk to that club looking for our picnic. She found her. <laughs> <laughs> you know the thing with it? I remember that story 100 because that was really? that was big. Of course, everybody was talking about it. Listen, the mom went in, found her, and it's like she basically got shamed in front of everybody. Yeah, which again, you know, it, it it's not the way I would have handled it, yeah. but that Jamaican mama needed to do her yeah. thing. She did what she did to make it happen. Yeah. So yeah. then you had all of these stuff there. You said the Saturday was just, it was still running, but that wasn't a night that you promoted or anything. No, and because um, out of respect with Larry at uh, Club Paradise, mm -hmm. he had his Saturday, which was big. And, you know, you have to be humble. Mm -hmm. uh, biz enough business for everybody. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't competing with Larry Saturday either. Got you, got mm -hmm. you. Because a lot of people from the outside, they wouldn't know... Who was around first, Paradise or Epiphany? That's a good question. Um, I do think Epiphany, okay. but I'm not sure. Don't quote me on that. Because when I started my main promotion, I remember I went to Larry mm -hmm. at Paradise. I said, Larry, I think Larry was around before me. I said, Larry, I'm on the block mm -hmm. and I, I'm going to promote these days. Yeah. And what Larry answered to me is between him and I. Yeah. But pretty much, you know. He underestimated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it was, you would say it was friendly competition between Paradise and Epiphany at that time there? It 
was, and competition is good for any business because sure. you up your game. Mm-hmm. It's it's actually better for the clientele, the customers, mm-hmm. right? They were. Larry's daughter used to party at Epiphany. I went to Larry. I would diss his wings. He'd diss my wings. But, you know, we're good. He'd buy me a yeah. drink when I go in. Larry's cool. Larry's from a, a strong... Uh, well-founded family. Yeah. The morals and love. Like, Larry is, Larry is good. Yeah. Good no, guy. That's good. And the fact that you guys could have friendly competition and it wasn't something where it was, I hate you, you hate no, me. That's no. good because you two were the only two reigning nightclubs, mm-hmm. Caribbean nightclubs in the West at that point there. Mm-hmm. So then Correct. now for you to be at each other's throat, it wouldn't be a good no, business. No, look. no, no. And we, we you know, we, we, we both had our... Um, or obstacles, mm-hmm. which we could share information because back then, the the nightclub was probably one of the, the hardest business to run because um, you're talking about the fire department, you're talking about liquor license, you're mm-hmm. talking about silly people that may go outside and do stuff, and then that will affect. So the administrative part of it, you yeah. know, people always say, "Why for this?" We just close down here, do that. I was like, go open a business, a boss. Yeah. Show me how to do it. Yeah. Go do your thing. Mm-hmm. And then years later, they'll come and say, Lord God, <laughs> are the worst investment me ever do. I said, yeah. okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, it's, you could tell it's not easy because now you're dealing with people, food for one people are hungry. That means they're agitated already. Mm-hmm. Put some liquor in them, mm-hmm. and then if they're smoking or whatever else the case is, yeah. and then that energy from seeing females. So then everybody's puffed up already. So that any little thing, mm-hmm. it's just going to get I'm gonna I'm going to address that, but I want to address something else too. Mm-hmm. At Epiphany, when we had the club going, mm-hmm. I had the DJs in, in a training. Okay, what we did is that we bought two maze with, with rats in each maze. First maze, no. We give the rat them um, a Heineken to drink. Yeah. We take a look at ganja, blow up on them, and we played reggae music for four hours straight and watched their reaction after that four hours with the Heineken drinking yeah. and the ganja blowing on them. Them start them up each other. Yeah. <laughs> very, very sensitive, very, very moody. Mm-hmm. Then we got another maze and they did the same thing, mm-hmm. but this time, because at Epiphany, we had a circulation of music. There's a cycle. Every DJ knows that before the bar closed, they play a certain thing. After the bar closed, they play a certain thing. Every, there's a cycle. There's a timing. Okay. And we went through the timing of the music and the cycle, and we watched the behavior of that maze with them rats. Totally different. So I wanted the DJs to realize that yeah. the brain, they're controlling. They're the heart of the business. They what control the percent? whole room. So now don't don't let look at one little girly that you want get that night. Yeah. A flash I think in front of you, I need to play for her. Yeah. No, you're playing you're playing for everybody. And if you have two people in the room, mm-hmm. let them enjoy themselves. You know what I mean? That's I remember one night Sto- as I had Stone Love was, was supposed to come in, it couldn't come in. And God bless Dr. J um uh Kinema Soka. Yeah. Dr. Dr. J. J. And I didn't realize that uh, Weepo used to get all of his music. Dr. J's music, Weepo used to be the person sent it to him. Okay. Anyways, that night, Dr. come in, and Dr. Dr. played for five hours. People raving, head hot with toil, them, I drink them, I party. And at the end of the night, Dr. J said, thank you for enjoying Kingdom of Soka, yeah. Dr. J. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So it, it's just, it, there's a formula. There's a, everything in life. That's why, you know, mathematician, everything, there's a formula. You have to learn the formula and perfect the formula, and then you're good. You understand that because it's not just, I don't have a plan. You have to have some sort of plan. Even if you're not going to follow it 100%, you have to have some sort of direction mm-hmm. and figure out what you're going. As you said, the music had a schedule. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everything had a schedule, and you just being attending it, you wouldn't know that. You're just thinking, oh, okay, I'm just here having mm-hmm. fun, and but you don't really know the ins and outs. Of course. On a Saturday night, we used to always end in religious music. So okay. after three, I pure religious God music, I hit you this. So you go on home, you're saying, praise the Lord. Again, anyone that knows that they're, when they're at Epiphany, the lineup for the kitchen is between half an hour and 45 minutes. Yes. And yes. We, we will not send any customer home without eating. Okay. When the bar is locked, the kitchen is open. Unlike the, how they're running business now, mm-hmm. kitchen is closed and the bar is open. No, yeah. it can't. Backwards. It can't be that way. 
you're a hundred percent right about that. That means you really knew what you're doing and what you're getting into. I want to get into some specifics now. Go on now. Like your Sunday. Okay, let's go into your, you said your big nights were your Sunday nights. Give Sunday a, became big, bigger than I wanted it to. And that's one of the main reasons I closed. We're going to get to that part there. Okay. Give me three events, three situations that happen on a Sunday that you remember that always sticks in the back of your mind. Hmm. Negative or positive? Let's go with two positive and one negative. More positive than the negative. Uh, was that a Sunday or Monday? That was a Sunday. Well, there was one experience with uh, Baron Lee. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, we had the whole backyard fenced up, Baron Lee and the, Baron Lee and the Dragoneers. And, mm-hmm. you know, he tried to get the audience. He tried. He couldn't get it. He couldn't. Yeah. He said, Phyllis, when you hear about this epiphany, I wanted to come here and just. But he, the audience wasn't feeling him. Got he you. tried. He tried. And then at the end of the night, he said, don't even pay me. Mm-hmm. Don't even pay me. It just couldn't work. It just couldn't work. Uh, being a man. Mm-hmm. Now. Being a man, anytime is in town, God bless uh, Brits and Paul, Black Reaction, the foundation, because they, they believed in Epiphany, they believed in Sundays, they were mm-hmm. there from the, from the beginning. Okay. Right? Uh, being a man would come in and do a show, and at the end of the night, I said, Beanie, he said, no, man, just give me a, a bottle of Hennessy. I said, what? I remember we had bought a package with a VP record with Sean Paul. Yeah. In braids tight up and fresh and young and in frayed like hell. Okay. It was three people on that package. I can't remember exactly who it was. Mm-hmm. But he was nervous. And again, Beanie Man was in town. And Beanie Man went on stage and saved the show. Just to, because I guess the crowd there, it was, he was a bit intimidated that, because the crowd was kind of rough. Because this is new Sean Paul. Yeah, brand new. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's uh, one more you want? Yeah. You okay. know what? Give me two more because oh what you have, it's so it's so amazing because, again, we've seen it from the outside, but to see it from your way of seeing it is totally different. Give me two more. Um, one Friday night, stress-free, it was, it was booming, it was happening. Uh, Ian, the mix master, Joe Grind, it was really, the vibes was good. Mm-hmm. And uh, one guy decided that he wanted a woman that was another gentleman's woman. Yeah. And the place was packed with capacity. There was around 100 outside, place was packed. And um, I got on the mic, I was talking, I said, get him out. So what, some of the people, they, they, they raised him up. Yeah. And they just kind of moved them from customer to customer to customer <laughs> to, to the front door security and threw them outside. <laughs> and the party never stopped. So everybody just contribute to get them out. <laughs> get out of here. You're not spoiling our fun tonight. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Wow. You still want another one? I want one that's more. Man. Oh, no, my God. No, I feel like I want uh, one more. Oh, Carlta. The, the dance hall girl is Carlta. Yes, yes, Carlta, yes, one yes. of the most flexible Carlta. Mm-hmm. Um uh, our crowning of uh, Mr. and Miss Epiphany, because we used to do that also annually. And uh, this guy named Seabert, he's a barber. Okay. And he's he's a proud Mr. Epiphany anywhere he went. Yeah. Man would wear his crown proudly. Man, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mr. Epiphany. I said, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. And what was really the driving force for you to put all of this entertainment together? Was it something that you seeked it or it came to you after a while because you seemed to be the spot? You know what? I Again, I, I guess it's, it's the management. is It's, mm-hmm. you know, the promotion. It, it was just trying to, to put this puzzle together mm-hmm. to do something different. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Um, and be respectful of the community. Yeah. I mean, Epiphany is the only place you can go and get a free cup of soup. Yeah. Just a, a little brata to cut the gas before you eat. Because like you said, sometimes some people come in and you can see the hunger. It's like they can't wait for the food. Mm-hmm. So that little free cup of soup, at least them can unwind. And you know what I mean? So okay. it's just, I believe in my people. I love my people. Mm-hmm. You know? It don't matter who's going to talk shit. Some, if everybody loves you, everybody's going to talk good about you. Something wrong. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. Yeah. So, you know what I mean? But we, we're we great people. Yesterday, was it yesterday? This lady come in, she got our $2,000 mm. 
from the government. Mm -hmm. So Phyllis, may I have to come give you a little money from this 2000? <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm looking at her. She, yeah. Then she said, me go Vaughn Mill, look at me buy, look. And she put everything on the mm -hmm. Like she's so excited to come and share her $2,000, you yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> and I embrace her love. Yeah. That's just the way we are. For sure. Right? What was one of the scariest nights you've ever had at Epiphany? Mm. We had a DJ named Fats, mm -hmm. a big guy. Mm -hmm. And again, it was one of those crowded nights and there were some guys outside and there was a crew that thought they were bad enough or I could pay the security enough because sometimes your doors close mm -hmm. and if you have security that licky licky, they'll take money to let people in. So mm -hmm. the security had closed the door, there's no, no more ins. And they decided to shoot the security. His name is Fats. Yeah. And um, big, strong guy, well fed. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad he was fine. But Fats, it scared me. But the what put a twist on this is that when the ambulance picked him up on his way to the hospital, mm -hmm. he asked for a Burger King. Yeah. <laughs> what? I don't know if you remember. So the ambulance actually stopped at a Burger King. <laughs> and this is, Fats, this is how Fats now, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just get that going shot before you want to go to the hospital deal with it he's yeah. hungry wow so it, it was scary but the way and it was written in the paper too about the Burger King and all it was in the paper trying to start okay so I guess running a club you were written up in the paper I guess and all those stuff a few times a few times yeah yeah but the good thing is though is that they've always called they do call they want to know exactly what happened from your perspective yeah you know what i mean mm -hmm. so the professionalism also plays a big part and even the mpp um george memaliti okay he was really tough to a lot of people especially jca mm -hmm. but he was always there for me mm -hmm. and i think it was my it, i don't know he, he he would come into epiphany and buy everybody around okay right there's a side of george that i saw that most of my community don't like him but I, I like them. Yeah. I like them. You understood it's business. We're here to do business. I know what you need from me. This is what I'll do, and everybody's happy from there. That's what it is. And that's what we try to install in, in our children, because mm -hmm. I have two children, a son, 22, daughters, give me 21. Mm -hmm. Daughter's a little challenge, a bunch of coming around, but they have to understand yeah. the fundamentals of business mm -hmm. and also of education. And it's not as everybody has to go to college or university. Mm -hmm. You can still go to a trade school, you can get street smart, but you know, uplift yourself. Yeah. Uplift yourself. Right? And that's really what it comes down to. One other thing here with Epiphany, what was your proudest moment? A proud night or a moment or something that happened where you felt really good about it? There was a, a lady that came up from Jamaica um, with a band. And it seems like they put her through quite a bit, and mm -hmm. she didn't have any place to go, okay. right? So when we opened up the club that morning, she was outside sitting on her suitcase. And she said, Phyllis, yeah. this is the only place I know where mm -hmm. to come mm -hmm. that I'll be taken care of. And we put her up in a hotel. We had a little fundraising for her. Okay. We bought her stuff for Jamaica and put her on a plane to go back. Yeah. And, you know... She still keeps in touch. Yeah. And sometimes it's just those little things. It's not like you could have said here, when we had 10,000 people outside and we made 500,000, that could have been a moment, but sometimes it's the ones, the little stuff where you touch somebody's mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. makes the biggest difference. You know something, when it comes to monetary stuff, I'm, I'm so simple. It's not even about money. Mm -hmm. You know, you're asking about him, get broke how many times yeah. and get back up and broke. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, this bill. Oh, it's it's not about money. Mm -hmm. It's it's about the the people skills. About touching somebody. You understand? Of course, when you have a little money in your account, there's a little. It's a good feeling when you use your your debit card and don't have to hold your breath. <laughs> yeah, because you know you're good. Ah, I've been many times where me I calculate check account. I'm in I bust a little sweat. I go to menopause now eight years. Yeah. Sometimes me just sweat, sweat, sweat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, financial stability is good. But but. Level it off with your people skills, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah? You're right. There was names, two names that you had brought up, which was um, Natty Brits and Watson. Oh, I love them. Trust me, because I remember... Real, real people. Yeah. That was when I was speaking to Super K and Blacks from Black Reaction, oh. too. Mm -hmm. And they said to me, after they had died, Super K was playing there, and he had to continue playing just so, just to keep it going. Mm-hmm. Understand? Yeah, you, man, I'm tearing up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Real love for those guys. Real love. I remember um, 
just to stop the the, the tears, Brits, mm-hmm. we used to have Father's Day barbecue and, mm-hmm. <laughs> and some paid to the police. I feel this is one of the worst events. There's always a fight every <laughs> Anyway, so Brits had a couple of his, you know, different families <laughs> there. Yeah. And, you know, it's he was trying to balance out the time with them. It, it was it was true. <laughs> because you know you, you'd have everyone that, oh even our Mother's Day brunch there's yeah. even on top of that one one customer you know I wouldn't even you know whatever his name he knows who he is yeah. uh, he came for four different seating for Mother's Day the same day you know <laughs> <laughs> and every time we are going like the first time we see him yeah so the last seating he came with his last family mm-hmm. somebody said boss we're not in charge for this one. <laughs> It's a place you go on, so you go on. So. <laughs> Crazy. It is yeah. because if if one person came mm-hmm. and he didn't bring that thing, and I hear say, so the man make four different trips. Yeah. Crazy. It's just what you go through. So I guess they were Brits and Watson. They were instrumental in a certain part very much of so. Epiphany. Very much so. Very. They are they are on board from day one. Okay. Because uh, myself and those guys we go back far. Yeah. Tight. Tight, mm-hmm. tight, tight. Also, Paul that died, the biker um, road dog. Mm-hmm. Paul. Paul and his boys, he, they did all the bike shows. Paul also died. Now, there's so yeah. many people that I love that died. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's like because when you have a club that's so popular for such a long period of time, you're going to have, there's going to be success stories that come out of it. People that met, had children and all this stuff. People are going to die. People are going to pass on. People are going to get dipped. People you're not going to hear from. It's just so many different things going on. One last name that I know that was really big with Epiphany was Bruno. Mm. You know what I mean? I gave his eulogy. I did his eulogy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That whole situation there when everything, I remember this was about 10 years ago? Mm-hmm. No, this was... A bit, a bit more than 10. A bit yeah. more than 10. Where were you when you heard everything, what was going on? Hmm. Bruno's Sagittarian like me. Mm-hmm. He's December 6th. I'm December okay. 2nd. Yeah. And Bruno always said to me, Phyllis, me born December 6, 1966. Mm-hmm. Six, six, six. Yeah. Wow. And so, you think? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But, mm, Bruno, mm-hmm. Bruno pushed every button. Like, he would be emceeing a show, and mm-hmm. he wants the ladies to guess how many tattoos or body pierce that he has. And they would, Bruno did stuff that, that blew my mind because yeah. uh, you know again I grew up in suburbs white with like, mm-hmm. but he was funny yeah. and he he energized me and he was my brethren and when he died, I had to be there for my friend. At that point, we had to take our website down, okay. and then after that, Phyllis died of AIDS. Flowers coming from all over the world for me. You know what I mean? Bruno and I were platonic friends, Mm -hmm. but he was my brethren. Whatever his lifestyle was, his lifestyle was. Mm -hmm. I knew he made a lot of women happy. I saw him with them. Sometimes arms around two of them going home. You know what I mean? I remember one time Bruno, Katy, a white, beautiful girl, she had two children for Bruno. One night, you know, again, stone of the club park. Bruno comes in and Katy, had a um, a dog leash yeah. dressed in <laughs> this just <laughs> and he from the front of the club all the way to the DJ booth yeah. he and like these are stuff that because he had his own uh, a sex shop in Jamaica right so he was okay. into that world I did not know yeah that. and he yeah. was these most of these people in Jamaica was getting the sex toys there was by courier and he was saying Phyllis you know what I said? This a man, Phyllis. So something was so much information, yeah. you know. So when he led Katy that night, six hundred people stopped. Motor drop water. And then the next day, Elephant Man called me. He said, "Phyllis, mm-hmm. this really happened." And that's when he, he busted the tune. Right Dog there. leash, you know, mm-hmm. in, a, in a just a bikini thing, and wh- and I heard he did it in Jamaica too. So. I don't know. It's just Bruno. Mm-hmm. Bruno was different. Mm-hmm. 
different. But I, I loved him as he was. I accepted him yeah. as he was. And why do you think HIV and AIDS is such a <sighs> taboo topic to speak about in the community? Well, other than Magic Johnson, would him get fat and healthier after that? So I don't know if he really had anything, yeah. but but we weren't we weren't um, exposed to that. We we didn't discuss even if we had to any other little minor health issues. Black people don't talk about health mm-hmm. issues. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When them I get slim, slim, and them have to say something, them, they, but we're not comfortable. We weren't mm-hmm. comfortable mm-hmm. talking about that. Uh, in Bruno's situation, it was the HIV, mm-hmm. but Bruno's Bruno is not something that he could. He chose not to deal with. He chose to do with it mm-hmm. the way that he dealt with it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Are we comfortable now, muscles? Can we discuss that? I, I'm not. I don't know much about it. Yeah. Have you discussed it on your show? No. You know what I mean? Maybe you need to get somebody in that can discuss this because yeah. maybe there are people out there that have questions and. Maybe things that need to be addressed, but me kind of have to discuss what me know, but me don't know nothing about it. I just know that I lost a very good friend, that mm-hmm. his life didn't, he didn't have to end his life yeah. at that stage. Yeah. You know? It's just part of the people that you meet along the journey. You know what I mean? And that's just happened to be somebody you met. And again, we've been talking about some super high times and some super low times also. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How long did you have Epiphany for before you decided to actually close About the doors of the club? Years. 17 years. Mm-hmm. That's how long I was running for. Because mm-hmm. Epiphany started with just, when I took it over from Rosa, it was like 3,000 square feet, just the front, where the kitchen is. Okay. Just over there. Yeah. So we took on another 4,000 square feet. Mm-hmm. That's when it became the club. Right? So it didn't start, it wasn't originally called Club Epiphany. It was just called Epiphany. Oh, it was called Club Epiphany. It's just capacity and promotion mm-hmm. that as, because I, I wanted the big space to start off with, but you're talking about $15,000 rent mm-hmm. versus you could start off with half, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to take it in, in tiers and stages. Yeah. Right? yeah. Wow. Okay. So then what year did you actually close the club now? Oh, God. I know. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember. Yeah. All right. Why did you close a club? And what was that feeling like coming down to close the Epiphany? Mm. I had my kids late. I I had, um, my son was 97, Mm -hmm. was born. Uh, Met his dad through Epiphany. And Mm -hmm. this uh, son, (laughs) he's a good man. (laughs) And uh, the daughter, I I had her 2000 also Mm -hmm. for, for this gentleman. So, I had a, a full-time nanny from St. Vincent okay. that was helping me with the children. But at that point, when you run a club, you get home three, four, five, little drunk, little tired, whatever not. You mm-hmm. sleep till two, three, then mm-hmm. you get up and you go again, you go again. Um, if you have young kids, mm-hmm. you're not a part of their life. If they get hurt, they don't run to you. Yeah. They were sleeping with the nanny and running to that. She was with us for eight years. Okay. Beautiful lady. Like, that's her second mom. Mm-hmm. But I needed to reconnect with my kids. My son was very much into soccer. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be a part of that. And I'm so glad I did that because now we're so close. We have a lot in common. We can talk, right? Yes. So it was that. And also, some of the clientele that I wanted was leaving Epiphany and the rougher guys that seemed to overlove me was coming in. Yeah. And as they're coming in, there's certain obstacles that they're bringing. They're bringing certain things in too mm-hmm. that makes your accountability and your 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 business practices questionable by so many other people, mm-hmm. right? Um I remember one time a good friend of mine in the court system said, "Phyllis, Epiphany name has been brought up in the court system too much." And I said, "Why?" Because where did you meet? Where was it passed? Where did you? And he, he said, people are starting to now look at you as you being, yeah. So I had to ask myself some questions and I, you know, and close down before they close you down. In other words, regain your family, mm-hmm. put that together. Mm-hmm. 
so I had to. Definitely, that makes sense. It's like, I'm gonna die on my own mm -hmm. sword. I'm gonna do it my way. Mm -hmm. Because you could see where this is going. Of you course. understand? And what was that like to actually, because you're choosing be between your baby, which is your club, and your baby that's actually your children. What was that fight like within your heart? You know, to be quite honest, Moss, I, it wasn't even a fight because my kids took precedence. My my kids was first. Yeah. You know, and I I I needed to get back to to who Phyllis is, mm -hmm. not the perceived Phyllis. Right. Um, at that stage, I was ready to do catering or do do different things where I don't have to be frontline. Because a lot of people that really know me. Mm -hmm will know that I'm not a frontline person. I usually have put somebody in front yeah. that can handle all of that. Because I get very nervous. I mean, one day I was walking into a dance and I was getting too much attention and yeah. my legs started to shake. I fell. <laughs> I, I fell. Muscle, yeah. I fell. Yeah. I just couldn't handle it. Like, yeah. I don't like being there like yeah. that, you know? It's like you didn't really set out to be front and center. Mm -mm. You set out to create a business, but mm -hmm. that happened to push you front yeah, and center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Because right now I'm looking to different things. Like mm -hmm. we're getting to ready to bottle or the sauce for our chicken wings and also the festival mix. Industry. So I, I'm looking. I have a five-year goal mm -hmm. because as the kids are now getting older, mm -hmm. it's time for me to do me and be able to relax. Because I can't run around like me used to anymore. Yeah. Right? Chilla, no, that's smart. And especially you having the intellectual property, you know, okay, I've had these wings and festivals. It's nothing new per se, but now that I put it together mm -hmm. and I could package it and say, here, oh, take yeah. it. You could take yeah. it home. Now you're thinking. Yeah, of course. Of mm -hmm. course. And, you know, you, you have to go through all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. And... At the end of the day, it's not about being popular and being this and being there. You know, what's in your bank? Do you have any assets? Do you have any real real estate? Do you, you know? Because I've had a lot and I've lost mm -hmm. a lot. But the mm -hmm. same same thing. The Epiphany is trademarked. Yeah, it's been trademarked now for fifteen years. Okay. So there is different stuff that we're working on under the trademark. Yeah. So it's time to take the business to a different level. All right. Today, right now, in 2020, what is Epiphany doing right now? Okay. Ironically, we're back at Arrow Road and Fitch. <laughs> right across, right across circle, from eh? Para Palace. I look out and I see Para Full Palace. Circle. And then the, a lot of the brothers, there's a courthouse right in front. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're in that plaza, the yeah. courthouse. We're on the side facing Arrow Road. Mm -hmm. And uh, right next door to us is, is the police headquarters. So when they bring the prisoners, they, yeah. so if you come to our place between 1130 and 130 right now, mm -hmm. you see all cops inside eating lunch. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> the judges having their wine. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we're back to food. We open 7 a.m. in the morning for Jamaican breakfast. Okay. $7.99 with your tax, $9, your porridge, your breakfast. And we open till in this COVID time until 9, which they don't get out till 10, 11. And stage three, which mm -hmm. should be, I think, today he's decided on that. Okay. Um, then we'll open till 12. It will never no more late night. I'm not interested in that. Yeah. Going back to food, entertainment. You know, just enough music so you can have a conversation and still listen to your music. Yeah. You know, because most of my clients tell them, all them have ear, ear and problem and <laughs> they can't turn up too long anymore, yeah. you know. So, yeah. It was an amazing run at Club Epiphany, especially where, as you said, you just set out to go do your own thing. It was mm -hmm. nothing really, you didn't set out to do this legendary thing where mm -hmm. Elephant Man now mm -hmm. is putting your name in songs and all of these stuff mm -hmm. here. I didn't even ask you that before I get you out of here. How did you feel when you heard that song? Was it Panda River? You know what? I, I laughed. I, mm -hmm. I felt okay. I felt yeah. good. Because the, the black entertainers... Mm -hmm. it, they had to pass through. Mm -hmm. They came, they had to pass through. No matter who brought them in, yeah. they have to come and say, you know, one love, give me some wings on festival. Yeah. You know what I mean? And when your people show you love, mm -hmm. it, it's it's a weird thing. It's almost like, I like a bad boy, I, I shed a tear. Yeah. I remember one time at Epiphany, is this, this man I come and screw up, I screw up in face coming to the bar, screwing up in face, you know? So before I served him, I said, you know, you're such a good looking guy. 
Why you mm-hmm. look so mad? Mm-hmm. You know? Every time the man come out of the club, he must smile. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Maybe nobody have never yeah. spoke to him mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. You know? So I love my people. I, I, I love to give. Because mm-hmm. when I give, I get. Business, it's a full circle. A lot of people just want, want, want. No, no. You have to give to yeah. your customers, too. You're 100% right. Super random. Do you remember a song called Libra Love? Mm-hmm. From New York. Mm-hmm. Do you know that Major Hype used to play that song? Mm-hmm. And he told me, "This is how. This is a real full circle moment. How all of this ended up right here. You've always been on the hit list. But when I was talking to Major Hype in an interview, and he said, "Yeah, the first one of the first times I came to Canada was on Libra Love Machine, and I went to Club Epiphany, and he remembered this in his mind." I said, "No way. I have to talk to Phyllis." Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, they, they had. They just love to come. Mm-hmm. They they came many times, mm-hmm. many times. And I, what I loved about them is that they selected for a club, not a dance hall. I'm not again. You know, people may take offense to this, but mm-hmm. the bugger talking, I'm not into it. Yeah, I used to pay my DJs more if they don't talk. Okay. There's one DJ on the radio <laughs> that gave me a lot of promotion, and I paid him not to play. Yeah. Because I got the extra promotion, but he's a radio DJ, mm-hmm. not a club DJ, if you know what I mean. Got you. There's a clear difference, at a, but a lot of people don't understand that there is a clear difference Ooh, between dancehall, radio, a FET, uh, downtown, uptown. <laughs> There's a difference. There's another DJ, DJ Jakes, that used mm-hmm. to play on our Thursday. This is a, a whitewashed, muscled up yeah. DJ, and Epiphany was the only black club he ever played in, mm-hmm. and still the only black club. And Jakes was loved. Yeah. And we broke him till he became comfortable with us and yeah. with the people. Yeah. And DJ, those guys, they can mix music, scratch. They can mix music. Mm-hmm. They don't need to talk. The music talks. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Joe Grind, Tyrone, yes. you know what I mean? Yeah. Good DJs. My brother, Joe Grind, put in his time. That was your brother. That's that my is your baby brother. brother. Joe Grind no my Ross and, and Ross longer than yeah. Mm, yeah. Joe Grind my baby brother. So you as you said at the beginning, it was really a family family. Family. And I it went it went to a point that uh when, it was really hard for me because as as in management, sometimes you have to make some really terrible decisions is that mm-hmm. Joe Grind became a Rasta. So okay. his selection kind of changed more towards the Rasta people. Mm-hmm. I'm not dissing nobody, but they're not big drinkers. They're not <laughs> big party, You know what I mean? <laughs> I hear you. So, you know, I had to pull it. And, and when I brought him back around, he realized that, listen, you know, right. no matter what you, you still come in, it's the job and you have to stick to the, the format. Strength. You understand, Phyllis, listen, I, we could sit here for hours upon hours because I know you didn't even go into the catalog of what's in your mind yet. Into it, you know. But. <laughs> time is time. Yes, you know what I mean? And is there anything you want to leave the people with? Anything that you've ever wanted to say that you've never said? Anything right now, the floor is yours right now. The only thing I want to say is that, you know, the sky is... A, the limit and mm-hmm. whatever you love in life pursue it don't mm-hmm. ever let any, anyone tell you that you cannot do this or you do, don't measure up to that pursue yourself do yourself do mm-hmm. your dream you know keep God in your heart hold family close and just be the best you can be and if they wanted to check out Epiphany, you said, uh, where is the new location? We're at where 2201 check Finch Avenue West, mm-hmm. suite number three, uh, right where the on, right on Air Road where we started, but we're on the other end. Instead of Shepherd, we're on Finch now. Mm-hmm. There's a courthouse right yeah. there in the same plaza, um, and there's Para Palace across the street. JCA is just down the road. We do have a patio, so you can uh, rope in and you can... Enjoy the patio also. Good. And mm-hmm. online, where could uh, leave some handles where they could check you guys out? Online, um, there's uh, epiphanyfoods.ca and Epiphany uh, Instagram and also um, Facebook. Perfect. Yeah. Phyllis? Phyllis. Muscle. Muscle. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a great conversation. Trust me, what you've said, what I've learned, and what 
you have in your heart has been amazing. Thank you so very much for actually sitting down and let's do this. No problems. Anytime, Mr. Bell. You have to tell me how you got your name. <laughs> I told you how the I got The camera's oh, about I to finish right now, so then we'll get to it another time. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, take care. As long as you don't get your name the way Elephant Man got his Yeah. I, I, he told me about that. Yeah. That's dangerous stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't know what you're talking about, but as I said, we'll talk off the air. Respect. All right. All well, right. ladies and gentlemen, this is Muscle, and this has been another Two Line Music Huts Entertainment Report podcast, and we are out. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichut.com.